For years now, I've been using a frame assembly jig for making my beehive frames. And uh, that frame assembly jig looks a lot like this. Actually, this is it. Um, I've gone through a couple of different ones, but uh, they get covered in glue and you have to maintain them and sand the glue off and all kinds of stuff. But uh, that's basically at the end bars stand in the side. And then uh, you put the tops and bottoms on. And once you get the tops and bottoms on, then these slide out and you can take the frames out. So uh, it's, it's a pretty basic jig. Uh, it's not that hard to build. There are a couple dimensions that are quite particular because your frames are, you know, assume, assuming your frames are all the same size. I have a, a one for making minis actually because it's, you know, less than half a size. But regardless, that dimension has to be right and it has to be deep enough to hold a number of frames that you want to do at one time. I generally build them for 10 frames at a time. Yeah, it's a good number. It's easy to handle. It's easy to do 10 frames. Um, you can make them for whatever you want. I see guys that got frames, jigs, they hold 100 frames or 60 frames or something. So uh, that's just not what I'm building. I'll just build smaller ones. So why I'm doing this today is uh, quite often in the spring, actually, when I get in the wood shop, I'll make a couple of jigs for the bee club that I'm in and uh, I take them over to the bee club meeting. We have a table where people bring items put on the table and then we kind of give those away as door prizes to the members. So I make these, sometimes I'll just take a, a pack of frames, I'll take 10 frames and put on the table. Um, sometimes I'll make jigs and I'll put on the table. Um, so it, you know, it blesses the members and it supports them and it supports the association as well. Uh, so I've already cut up my material here and I'll just show you how I put these together. Okay, as mentioned, this is what we're going after. I built this one. This is the very first one I built like this and uh, it, I built it a little bit different way. And the challenges I found with building, building this fashion uh, are as follows. This is all one piece. So when I had this, this big piece here, I had to cut uh, a really deep uh, rabbit, I guess you call that, out of the end and, you know, take, take a chunk out. That's kind of tricky. And, you know, if you're trying to do it at table saw and stuff, it it's, can be unsafe. And the same here, I had to notch the corners out here. So I got to thinking about that, how I could do that a lot easier. And this is what I came up with uh, for, let's see, that's that one, for the the one end with the big rabbit. Now I, I cut these all in three pieces. Uh, that goes that way. So it goes that way. And then we'll put that on top here. So that kind of approximates that same thing, right? It gives me, uh, gives me the same kind of a part. And I get all that nicely aligned, put a little bit of glue on it, put some little nails in it to clamp it together. And uh, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. And on the other side, then, it's the same thing, but sort of the other way around. I'll put that down, and I'll put this on top of that, and put that on top of that. So, so now, when I get this piece, this, these two can intersect quite nicely like that. Uh, glue and a couple of nails or something. Uh, and we got her made there as well. So this is this is just exactly how I'm gonna put this together. I made these five of these last year and I really got in a groove of how to do this. It's a little tricky, especially once you get down to the, the third and fourth side to get everything lined up and, you know, in there just right. But, uh, that's what, that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, so what I need to do to start with is I need to glue, what I can do is, is I wanna use this as a spacer so I know where to put this piece. So what I can do is I can just use that as a spacer. I can glue this piece on right here. And I try to flush it as best I can. I'm gonna run my sander over that when I'm done. So. That's exactly what I'm going for right there. So I gotta get set up with the glue and the nailer and uh, then we'll put this together. Okay. 
first one's the worst. There's nothing glued together. I'm not using a, a, wood, a waterproof glue on this. It's not a not in danger of being outdoors at all. It's still high quality glue though. It's a tight bond original. I can't get in the drawer where my staples are, so I have to be thrifty. I'll just flip this over. I'll do exactly the same thing on the other side. And that's just a spacer, so it doesn't matter if it's not flush, it has to be flush there. Okay, so there's there's that one, and I can keep going like that. I can do I can do multiples of these. Sometimes caution you to keep your fingers clear of that stapler, and that's why those two both came out. That's just a function of the uh, grain direction in that wood. I'll have to address that later. So we'll do another one. We'll do another one like this. Keep going because I need four of these sides. I'll just do that. I don't really, I don't really need that. I can just set it on the table.
Sometimes you're doing a puzzle, it's hard to see the big picture. nails I think on these but uh, I've got all my parts sitting over there and my all my nails and staples are in the drawer that I can't reach so now I need that one see I needed that anyway One more of those. Okay, that's the easy part. So next what I need to do, is I need to get these put on properly. Let me turn this so you can see it. set this up. I could attach this right now. I'm, I may just do that, but this is what I'm having to do. So I have to glue this one on here, but I want to get it equidistant here between these two sides. I don't know that dimension, so I just measure both sides and adjust as necessary. <clears throat> but I think what I'll do is I'm going to glue and attach these on to the ends and then I can flip it over and use use that as a base this is really good glue we put this glue on it it's very strong so I'm not going to glue that yet
It's always hard to know how to staple this because it's right at the end. The stapler is a bit wild. Could staple it in this way, you could staple it in this way, you know. Let's compromise, put it on an angle here. Looks like that'll work. Let's turn that around and do the same thing on the other side. Once this glue dries too, it, it offers some pretty serious rigidity. Uh, that's one of the kind of the downsides of this jig is it because the attachments are kind of small here. It's not real robust. It's pretty good. care of those nails that's sticking out. Alright, now what I can do is turn that over. I'll turn it toward me here so I can do these measurements. Uh, my little ruler here, and my bifocal here. <clears throat> and I need to just measure equidistant between these two sides. Okay, so I have an inch and five sixteenths right there. And I got an inch and holy smokes. And it's an inch and seven sixteenths, so split the difference of an inch and three eighths. Just over an inch and three eighths. Right there. Okay, so mark that. Because then I'll add some glue. and you put staples in it, right? What I can do though, instead of trying to flip that over with this piece not attached, is now I can put this top piece in here. Now hold it all together.
just over an inch and three eighths, I said. So that's pretty much one jig finished. I should say finished, assembled. I spent some time with my sander sanding the jigs inside now. I'll let that glue dry overnight though before I do. We'll go on to the next one. Anybody remember how I did that? It worked pretty good. I don't remember how I did that. We'll just... We'll just put... These are the... These are the removable pieces. I shouldn't be using those. It doesn't matter because they're just supports.
I got about four, five staples left. <laughs> Glad I wasn't four or five staples short. Okay, so these will uh, dry overnight. And then tomorrow, I'll be able to sand those. I've already cut these. Here. I've already cut these. These are the removable parts. I, I usually get a frame and set it in here so that I know what's right. But I didn't do that before I assembled. So I'll, I'll definitely do that before I take them to the bee club. I would hate to have somebody take this home gladly and then realize it's wrong dimensions won't work. So the trick is with the dimensions is the frame end bar when when the frame is assembled, you know, you assemble frame, no foundation, put it in here and the end bar needs to sit nice nice and I'm going to say very, very close to this side, okay? And then this dimension here, where this thing slides out, you need to have enough space in here for the end bar. Now, that'd be tight, but it has to be real close to uh, work, work well. You know, if it's too sloppy, then it's difficult to keep them all in, in order to build your, build your frames. Those are the frame jigs, and thanks for watching this little assembly video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll try to put a link to my SketchUp uh, library online. Uh, you should be able to find the dimensions for this and all my other products that I build, as, as a matter of fact. So you can feel free to use those to build your own woodenware if that's what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Take care and have fun.